morning and welcome to First Baptist Church Bible Study. You know, I've always found it interesting that not even children want to be talked to or treated like a child. I mean, for anyone, young or old, who so much as think they are grown, we are highly sensitive to anybody talking to us and treating us like a child, even if they are children, young teenagers, or young adults. A lot of people are offended and insulted when they feel as though they are being spoken to or that they are being treated like a child. It seems to be one of the most offensive offenses <laughs> we could ever commit. I'm not even sure what it means to be treated, you know, you know for one to treat one like a child. But we already know that if the children don't like it, the adults are about to tolerate it from anybody at any time for any reason. You know, talking to and treating one like a child seems to be a real problem. Especially, you know, in child-parent relationships, you wouldn't expect that. Uh, in close relationships or friendships, close intimate relationships, and in leadership. And I know it can be just our perception, just our imagination, and our subjective understanding of, you know, the situation or the treatment itself, which may or may not be correct, may not be right. But oftentimes, uh, it is not what was intended or what was meant by the other party who spoke. However, it doesn't lessen the impact that it can have on us. Admittedly, sometimes we are being sensitive and we can be quite defensive, uh, maybe even a little bit paranoid. But for some reason, it can still touch a sore spot with us. Are you hearing me? At this point, I need to raise my hand because I have a question. Amen. When did it start and what was the reason for treating people differently based on their age? Should people of all ages, from the youngest to the eldest, be treated kindly and given respect and due consideration? When it comes to how we communicate with and how we treat people, why is there one standard for adults and another standard for children and youth? How did that happen? If you have the time, I have the word. Come on in and let's talk about it. And if you don't have the time, take the time and come on in here. But well, welcome again to Tuesday in the Word. On this Tuesday, January the 18th, 2022, I pray your strength in the Lord. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Yes, Facebook. Yes, YouTube friends and followers. It is that time again. It's time to get in this word, and it's time to get this word in us, in our hearts, in our minds, and yes, in our spirit, in our lives. Amen? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. And the word goes on to tell us, says, uh, these were more noble, I think that means more committed than those at Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. How about you? Have you been studying? Did you study for today? Study the word. The word works, and it will work for you, my friend. Amen. I don't know whether you've noticed it yet, but we're living in an ultra-sensitive society where it seems that we're all armed and dangerous, locked and loaded with the finger on the trigger, just waiting for someone to disrespect us, and it doesn't take much to drop the hammer. Tragically, this is not just a figure of speech. This is what people are literally doing. It is what we are living with and dying with every day. There's so much anger, so much attitude and hostility that, listen, we find ourselves walking on eggshells just to avoid a confrontation. And that may be our only hope of living to fight another day. 
I mean, let's look at it. Let's be honest about it. Much of the nonsense and the violence and the senseless killings we see today are often based on the perception that someone has been disrespected. And I suppose a part of it is uh, how we talk to people, how we treat them, how we uh, relate to them, our, our speech. It could be our tone. It can be perceived as talking down to people or disrespecting people. You know, maybe it's that we appear to be controlling and domineering, uh, you know, maybe through our speech, the way we talk, through our actions, the way we act, what we do and our behavior. Or maybe we come across as being disrespectful and just inconsiderate, insensitive. Our way of speaking, our mannerisms may be perceived as trying to tell someone what to do. And you know what the response to that's going to be. You don't tell me what to do. You ain't my daddy. They don't even listen to their daddy. <laughs> They're implying that I may be able to tell my own child what to do. Or as they say, I may be able to order them around, but they aren't my child. Well, to that I say hallelujah. <laughs> we associate being spoken to in a certain way and being treated a certain way. We make that connection with childhood. As though it's permissible to treat children and youth in a disrespectful, demeaning, and in a condescending and, and inferior way. No, my friend. People are people regardless of what their age is. You know, with all the negative connotations associated with being treated like a child, I find that there are, uh, you know, there are great benefits in being treated like a child. I, I think some of our children are finally figuring it out that, hey, this ain't bad at all. I don't mind being a child because there are some benefits to this. And I'm happy to report, my friend, that God treats me like a child. That's what I'm talking about today. That's what I'm teaching on today. God treats me like a child. And guess what? Come a little closer. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it that God treats me like a child. I got to tell you now, no one else can get away with that. <laughs> no one else can do me like that and get away with it. But I love it that God treats me like a child. Listen, my friend, and by that, it's not in an inferior way. It's not in a mean way. And although he is God, he doesn't treat me like I'm a nobody. He treats me like a child. He treats me like I'm his child. God doesn't disrespect me. He doesn't belittle me. Listen, and although his voice reigns from heaven, he never talks down to me. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? And although I need him every day, every hour, every second, he does not treat me as though I'm irres irresponsible or incompetent. You know, and ironically, you know, we don't realize it, but being treated like a child is exactly what we want. That's what we yearn for. <laughs> Listen, that's what we live for. We want our daddy to treat us like a child, his child. We want our mother to treat us like a child, her child. We like the idea of being someone's child because we like the benefits of being a child. We like that idea of belonging to someone. And it is God's nature to treat us as his children. It is in God's character to own us as his children. Flaws and all. <laughs> I can't think of anyone who is complaining about being a child of God or being treated like a child of God. I'm telling you, I love it. I love it that God treats me like a child. Please hear what the Word of God says. We're going to the Word of God. Got two scriptures for, for us today. And I want you to see what the Word of God has to say about our child parent relationship with the Lord. Amen. And it is a combination, or should I say, a conglomeration of, uh, of love. And, and, and these are the things that, goes, uh, that go into parenthood. Uh, some of these things, are, uh, this is not a complete uh, list or rundown of things, but certainly these are some of the most prominent ones. Is that, of course, you know, love is at the top of the list. A amen. You know that. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's that love. And out of that love pours uh, a number of other things. Out of that love uh, pours, um, he nurtures us. <laughs> Amen. He cuddles us. He cares for us. He lets us know that he is there for us. Amen. 
He, he nurtures us. And when we're sick, he brings us back to health. Uh, amen. When we're down, he picks us up. God nurtures us, cares for us, and he nourishes us. He makes sure that we have good food to eat. That's what we're doing today. I say that's what we're doing today. You know, and one of our ministers, Minister Loretta, she's always, I'm hungry, Pastor, feed me. God does that. He feeds us through his word. He feeds us through how he provides for us. He gives us that nourishment that we need to grow each and every day. He disciplines us. And I know some of us don't like that. <laughs> we don't like that. We don't like to be disciplined, but God disciplines us. We're going to talk about that in a moment. He disciplines us. God corrects us. All of this is part of that child-parent relationship. He nurtures us. He nourishes us. He disciplines us. He corrects us. Amen. There's that correction. And, and, but, but God does not stop there. He doesn't stop there. He doesn't just uh, uh, correct us. He doesn't just discipline us. But there, there's that, not only that correction, but there's that restoration. Amen. And I'm glad about that. Do you not know that I have been restored? I would tell you how many times, but I can't even count the times. When I've fallen, when I've veered off the course, when I've, uh, you know, walked away from God, turned my back on God. But he restores. He forgives. That, that's part of parenthood. For those who don't know about parenthood, that's part of parenthood. That's part of that child-parent relationship. He restores us. There's that uh, uh, restoration. There's that protection. Amen. There's that, that, that protection. And, uh, you know, let me tell you something, my friend. I'm glad that, that, you know, I didn't grow up with a father. My father was killed when I was a, a youngster. But my mother, she raised us. She watched over us. She nurtured us. She nourished us. She disciplined us. Amen. She corrected us. But then she restored us. Give me a hug. <laughs> she restored us. She brought us back. She protected us. Amen. And I can remember, you know, I, I, I got to be honest with you now. You know, I grew up fighting all the time. I'm, I'm talking about all the time. All the, almost every day in a fight. I got put out of Archer High School in Atlanta for fighting. Then I go to Booker T. Washington High. Like that was going to help. I kept on fighting. <laughs> But let me tell you something. There was a guy in our neighborhood. Actually, we were friends. Everybody, I think I mentioned this to you once before. Everybody in his family, the guys, and I think there were one or two uh, girls in the family, but they all looked like giants. I mean, they, these guys looked like they could have been twins to Goliath. Amen. And I jumped on their brother. He was like the shortest one. I think he was about 6'2 or something. I jumped on him one day. He went home and got his brother's. And uh, I'm not going to say that I ran home. I'm just going to say uh, I did make it, <laughs> I did make it to the house. <laughs> and, uh, and, and when my mama opened the door, uh, and, and these guys were coming behind me, when my mother opened that door, I came in, and nobody was going to get to me at that point. I was good. I was good. I didn't say I ran home. I didn't say I ran scared. But I used wisdom. <laughs> I used wisdom. These guys were giants. <laughs> and I had put a good weapon on their brother. Man, I love it. You know, I've been in trouble before. And you know who was right there waiting on me? God. He was there waiting on me with open arms. And listen, even before I got into anything, he was already protecting me. He was already shielding me. He was already guarding me. And that's part of that child-parent relationship. And then, listen, and he provides for us. You know, uh, uh, again, my mother, she provided for us, and we ate all the time. We ate as much. As a matter of fact, she made us eat more than we wanted to eat. And it wasn't always what we wanted to eat, but we ate. Amen. There was that security. There's that security that God provides for us. This is part of that parent-child relationship, that child-parent relationship. Amen. So let's look at Romans uh, chapter number eight. And uh, uh, we're going to look there first. Romans chapter number eight. I want to look at verses 14 through 18. Now listen to this now, because this, uh, and there are many other scriptures that could uh, build our case for being children of God or being a child of God. But I think this is one of the 
better ones in terms of us being able to understand. I think it's a little simpler, and I think we can understand it uh, uh, quite well. But Romans chapter number 8 and uh, verse number uh, uh, 14, and uh, we're going to begin with verse 14 and read down through verses uh, 18 from the King James Version of the Bible. Listen to what he says. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons or the children of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. For ye have not, listen, received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, or Daddy. That's a very intimate term. It's not uh, Father. I mean, that's okay. That's good because he is Father. But this is on a more intimate level where uh, uh, we would just say, we'll be more casual, more personal with it. Daddy, where we cry, Abba, Father. That, and and that, that, that term there is, is really just like us saying, Daddy. He said, we've not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. Amen. Then it goes on to say, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Can I say that again? That we are the children of God. There is absolutely no doubt about our relationship with God. I'm his child. Amen. And then listen to what he says because he is showing us that along with that relationship, child-parent relationship, there are some benefits. And this is what he says in verse number 17. He says, now, if children, another way to read that is to say, since we are his children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Then Paul comes up with his uh, southern accent, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Then I want you to look at another scripture that I'm going to call the flip side of that. Amen. Hebrews chapter number uh, uh, 12. Hebrews chapter number 12, beginning with verse number 7. Now I want you to understand these go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. We're looking at uh, the love of God, the care of God, the gentleness of God, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God. Listen, my people. And now we have to look at the other side of that because as children, we sometimes stray. As children, we are sometimes disobedient, sometimes rebellious. So what this loving father of ours, this loving God of ours, when we are going astray, he will not allow us to go without a fight. Are you hearing me? In other words, God sees us when we go astray and, die, and, and we are going in a direction that he doesn't want us to go. So he finds a way to bring us back. He wants to get us back on our feet again. Amen. So uh, Hebrews chapter number, uh, what did I say, 12? Yeah, chapter number 12. Now listen to what the word of God says, beginning with verse number um, uh, 7. It says, now listen. If ye endure chastening, or if you endure correction or disciplining, listen to what the Word of God says. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons or with as a child of his. He says, for what son or what child is he whom the Father chases not? What, what is this? What did we get? How did we get to the point where parents feel like they don't have to uh, chastise their children? That we don't have to correct our children. That we don't have to discipline our children. We're too busy sometimes trying to be their friend that we're not their parent. Listen to what I just said. And listen to what the Word of God says, my friend. Because chastening is part of that child-parent relationship. That's part of it. Don't tell me you don't have to chasten, you don't have to discipline your child. Because they don't ever do anything wrong. Come on back down. Bring your head back down here out of the clouds. Listen, my friend. All have gone astray. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Please hear me. And listen, he says, chastening. Uh, listen, if you endure, if you take it, <laughs> I've had to endure it whether I wanted to or not. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as a child. 
He says, as with sons, my friend, for what son is he to whom the father chaseth not? Chasteneth not. A parent corrects their child. But listen to what he says in verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, hear this now. You may not want to hear it, but hear it. In verse number 8, he says, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all are partakers of chastisement. He said, Now if you be without that, then you are bastards and not sons. You, you, and it's simply saying, I know that word sounds like profanity, uh, but I'm using it as it means in the Bible here, which means that you're without a father. It says, now, if you don't come under the chastisement, the correction, and the discipline of a father, you are just like you don't have anybody. It's like there's nobody over you, nobody watching over you, nobody caring for you. You're out there all alone. He said, then, are you bastards and not sons? Then verse 9 says, furthermore, you have had fathers of, the, of our flesh which corrected us. It's not anything unusual. God says, when I correct you, that should not be anything foreign to you. Because in the flesh, we have mothers, we have fathers, we have teachers, we have people who have authority over us who correct us. He says, we had fathers of the flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. We respected them for it. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits? And he says, should we not be in subjection to them uh, and live, subjected to him and live? Amen. And then verse 10, he says, uh, 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 for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. They do it according to whatever they're trying to accomplish. But listen to what the word of God says. It says, after their own pleasure, but he, God, he does it for our good. He does it for our profit. He corrects us. He disciplines us for our own good. Yeah, that's what mama used to say. Uh, this is for your own good. And this hurts me worse than it does you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, Gladys. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He says, uh, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. God is trying to bring us into a right relationship with him. Please hear me, my friend. Now, listen, no chastening for the present seem to be joyous. You telling me. <laughs> no chastening, listen, for the present seem to be joyous. It's but grievous. Yes. I can't think of that number of times. I grieved. Yes. It says, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit. And you're looking at the afterward product right now. You're looking at the afterward. That was the before. Now you're looking at the after. And I say, praise the Lord. Amen. He says, after it, it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them who are exercised thereby. Then he says, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, my Lord, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Amen. We thank God for that word right there. We thank God for speaking to us and letting us know something about that parent-child or the child-parent relationship. Amen? And God tells us in his word, says now, part of that love and part of that care and part of that concern and part of that protection and provision, all of that, right there, smack dab in the middle, there's that discipline. There is that correction. And I thank God for it. You know, we live in a day and time now where people don't want to be told anything. They don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be called out. But please hear me, my friend. Through the scriptures, I don't know what you saw, but here's what I hoped we would see. <laughs> Amen. Here's what I hoped that we would see. You know, first of all, I hoped uh, that we would see the head of God or his mindset that he is always thinking about us. You know, even in our sin, he thought about us. While in trouble, he thinks about us. He thinks about us, not just that we are thought of, but it's all about what he thinks of us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is the head of God, the mind of God that, that, that thinks about us. Amen. The mind of God that looks out and sees our condition and our situation and then uh, that that that's the, what I call the head of God then that uh, leads on to the heart of God and we know that God loves us God is love 
And God loves us unconditionally. It is the heart of God. Not only he thinks about us, but it's how he feels about us. And he loves us. Amen. His love is eternal. And because he loves us, I told you, he disciplines us. And yet he has mercy and compassion on us, even in the midst of correcting us. He shows us mercy. He shows us compassion. What a loving God. What I'm talking about. You know, my daddy is a loving daddy. Amen. I'm talking about the head of God, the heart of God. And then there's the hand of God. Amen. He provides for us. Amen. And he is always working on our behalf. That's what the hand of God represents, a movement of God. Amen. Amen. That hand of God that's always making a way. That hand of God that is always opening doors that no man can close. That hand of God that is always closing doors that no man can open. It is that hand of God that is always working and moving on our behalf, coming out of his mind through his heart and out of his hand to us. He provides and supplies our every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't misunderstand me, my friend. God does not want us, listen, to remain children in the sense of being irresponsible, in the sense of being immature, in the sense of being reckless. No, he doesn't want us to remain children like that. The Lord expects us to grow and develop and mature and operate and live as responsible adults, spiritually and otherwise. But we will always be his children. Amen. I said, we will always. I love it that God treats me like a child. Amen. And on my way out the door, let me give you just a few things, a few of those benefits. That we are his children that come as a, as a result of being children of God. I say there's benefits. I, I say there are benefits. Ask your child, if, are, are, are there any benefits? Have you noticed any benefits of uh, uh, you being my child? Uh, or rather, your child asking the parent, have, have you, uh, or the parent really, yeah, asking the child, have you noticed any benefit of you being my child? Have you noticed any advantages to being my child? Ask your child that. Ask your children that. So, you know, by me being your mother, by me being your father, have you noticed that there are some benefits that goes along with that? Because just in case you haven't noticed, that is my bed you're sleeping in. That room that you keep calling your room, that's not yours. That's my room. That phone that you have that I can't even get a call from, that's not your phone. That's my phone. That food that you keep going in the refrigerator, getting out and eating all times of day and night, I know you feel like it's yours, but it's not. That, that's my food. The clothes that you're wearing, I hope you're enjoying them. And I know you got a little job, you're working a little bit and all of that, but do you not know that I am the one that is providing for you and I'm not complaining about it? I love it. It's my responsibility. But I just want to know, have you noticed it? Do you notice that you have benefits by being my child? Amen. When you're sick, I get you to a doctor. Now pray for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you're down and out, I comfort you. I talk to you. Amen. So, and, you know, so you ought to ask your child sometimes, uh, do you realize what benefits you're getting from being my child? And I'm not talking about, you know, don't be insulting them. Don't be, you know, but be, 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 be kind about it, okay? As Miss Lynn Leverett would say, be nice, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you know, and I told you before, like I said, I don't want to be nice right now, <laughs> but be nice. Listen, one of the benefits of being a child of God is we are Indeed, legitimate, bona fide children of God. Amen. I'm going to speak on that in just a moment. Yeah, I'm going to go into detail on that. But we are legitimate, bona fide children of God. You know what? I know who my daddy is. <laughs> I said, I know who my daddy is. That's one of the benefits. I'm legitimately his child. Then we have his undivided attention. He watches over us. He never leaves us alone. God is constantly watching us, guarding us, protecting us. We have his undivided attention. And I know sometimes we get a little, uh, you know, our children, they think one is getting more attention than the other. And that, that's probably true. Uh, but with God, you know, God can love on all of us at the same time. Don't get angry just because he's hugging me right now. He can hug you too. Don't get upset with me because he's over here talking to me and holding my hand and comforting me. He can do the same for you and, and never leave me. 
Amen. We have his undivided attention. You're never going to say, well, God, I called you and I didn't get an answer. You're never going to be able to say, well, God, I needed you, but you weren't there. No, you can't say that, my friend. If you do, you know you're not telling the truth. We have his undivided attention, and I'm glad about that. I'm glad to know that somebody is always watching over me, caring for me. As his child, I am his dependent that is dependent upon him. Amen. I said, as his child, I am his dependent that is dependent on him. You got that now in an adjective working together there. I'm his dependent. Amen. Do you not know he puts my name down as his dependent on his tax return? <laughs> oh, you know, that's not so. But anyway, I am God's dependent that is dependent upon him. That's a benefit of being his child. I say, I love it that God treats me like a child. As his child, I'm entitled to some things. Wait a minute. I didn't say I deserve them, but I am entitled. Hallelujah. I said, as his child, I'm entitled to some things. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm entitled to some things. I inherit some things because I'm his child. There are some things that are coming to me, some blessings, some benefits that are coming to me because I'm a child of God. I get benefits that no one else gets because I'm his child. As his child, my friend, listen, I would never be heir to the throne. Now, I'm not even worried about that. I'll share the throne. I'll be there at the throne. Amen. Amen. But God gives us wonderful, endless, great benefits simply because we're his child, simply because we're his children. Now, I told you something I was going to come back to, and let me tell you something. This is on a personal level. There are terms that I don't like, and there are terms generally I don't use. I don't, I don't use when speaking of my children, uh, uh, whether, you know, these terms like stepchild, and that has become so negative. How do you think a so-called stepchild feels when they hear something like, well, you, you know, Man, uh, she treated him just like a stepchild. Like that's a bad thing. All children. There's some children that I inherited when I got married, but they are my children. I, I don't have stepchildren. I don't know. What is a stepchild anyway? I don't have stepchildren. I have, I have children. There's no such thing as illegitimate child. Maybe some illegitimate parents. <laughs> but I don't like those terms, stepchild. I don't like those terms, illegitimate child. How do you think a child feels when they hear that? There's no such thing as an illegitimate child. What did the child have to do with being here? Come on now. No such thing. Thank you, God, that I'm not a stepchild and I'm not illegitimate. I have a father. Or uh, half. I, I don't like those terms, you know, uh, step and... Uh, 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 illegitimate and half. This is my half half brother. Half brother. Where's the rest of them? That's only half of them. Where's the rest of them? It's my half sister. No. <laughs> That's either your brother or your sister. Now this is me. All right. I know you may look at Webster Dictionary on Wiki or like whatever. I don't care. You may even talk to Google about it. I don't like those terms. I don't even like in-law. You know, one of the things that my good uh, uh, brother Cecil, my uh, youngest daughter, my youngest sister, rather, her husband, he never calls me and he never refers to me as, as brother-in-law. He says, brother. Whenever we're out somewhere, he introduces me. He says, this is my brother Isaac. And, you know, those are terms I don't like because it says something about how we treat people. It says something about how we think about them. And I thank God that God never treats us like whatever all that is, stepchild and in-law and outlaw, whatever, I don't know. But let me tell you something, my friend. Uh, ha ha let me ask you something, rather. Have you been blessed? <laughs> Do you have a better appreciation with being treated and spoken to like a child? <laughs> I hope so. Because I love it that God treats me like a child. Amen. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Continue to be with us and keep us, God, and lead us in your will and in your way. In Jesus' name, amen.
That's it, my friend. Amen. Aren't you glad you've been in the right place at the right time and you got the right stuff? Now, run on and see what the end shall be. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer.